Okay, this video covers the different categories of cash flows. We're just going to go a little bit into more detail about that. And the categories of cash flows are um, shown on the cash flow statement. The cash flow statement shows you how the cash balance went from its beginning of the year balance to its end of the year balance. And the, the total change in cash can be broken up into three categories, operating, investing, and financing. So let's go through a made up example of activities and I'll show you how I classify the activities into the categories on the cash flow statement. And I'll shuffle over to the corner and let's take a look. So uh, these, this is just a list of activities happening in different years, and we'll assign these cash flows to the cash flow statement in the appropriate activity. So uh, at time zero, the owners of this brand new business are gonna provide $100 of capital to the business. And so this is an equity investment in the business. Uh, and this, this is a financing of the company. So owners means they're, they're having ownership in the company, so it's an equity investment. It could also be a debt investment. That would read something like, uh, people are lending $100 of capital to the business. That would be a debt investment. But whether it's an equity or a debt investment, it's a financing cash flow. It's financing the business. Uh, so pay, uh, uh, capital raising from in investors or distributing capital back out to investors. Those are both uh, examples of financing activities. So this $100 of capital for the business is a $100 cash inflow from financing activities. Next, in year one, the company is gonna take some of that $100 and invest it in property and equipment. And when you invest in a long-lived asset or divest from long-lived assets, that is a cash flow from investing activities. So this $80 is a cash outflow. We're paying $80 for property and equipment. And it's $80 cash outflow from investing activities. Okay, uh, period two is uh, where, what we're gonna do in period two is we're gonna produce and sell inventory and generate $200 of net cash flow. So producing and selling inventory is operating. That's what the business is in business to do. And so when we pay money to acquire inventory, we pay money for sales people or other staff members. Uh, we pay money for rent. Those are all operating activities. When customers give us cash for our inventory, that's also an operating activity. And when you put all those together, what it says here is that that's a $200 net cash flow into the business. So it's a cash inflow from operating activities in year two. In year three, we're done with our operating activities. We finish production and we sell the remaining property and equipment that we have for $220. So that's the, you could say that's the salvage value of the property and equipment. We are giving our property equipment to somebody else and they're giving us $20. So it's a cash inflow of $20 and it's an investing activity. So plus 20 there. And finally, uh, in year four, we just distribute whatever we have left back to the owners. So we're wrapping up the business. The, that was kind of a nice little four-year business, and it's over now. And the whatever capital is left is distributed to those owners. So that's a cash outflow, since cash is now leaving the business out to its owners. And it's a cash outflow of 240. So that's kind of the life cycle of a business from inception to investing in assets, to operating, to divesting from assets, to wrapping up the business and giving the capital back. And that's it. That's just my example of allocating different activities to the correct section on the cash flow statement. Next, what I want to do, because this is kind of an interesting opportunity, this is going to be a tangent. So this has nothing to do with the cash flow statement. And the tangent we're going to go on is we're gonna value this business opportunity. So this business, op here's just this section of the uh, financing cash flow. Uh, this is what the investor would be most interested in, the investor in the company. Hey, when do I have to give money to the company and when do I get money out of the company? And this tells the investor when that happens. So we don't, in year zero, we don't know that this is the case. We would have to estimate that this was gonna be the case. But what the question is, is this a good business opportunity or not? And so let me show you how uh, you might go about calculating that. And you'll use a formula that we'll use later in the semester. It's called the present value formula. 
So the, it's easy to know what this $100 investment is worth. I know if I pay $100 today, that's, a, that's $100 less than I have, that I have today. What's less clear is what is this $240 that I'll be getting four years from now? What is that worth in today's dollars? And to calculate that, you need to calculate its present value. So 240 is the future value, and we're gonna divide it by one plus an interest rate raised to the power of N, where N is the number of periods. So let me calculate the value of this business opportunity for you now. The present value of the business opportunity. The first term here is our $100 initial payment, and this one's pretty easy. The future value of this one is $100, the future being today. And we're gonna divide it by one plus an interest rate. Now I've selected an interest rate here of 10%. Point 0.1 is the same as 10%. That is a kind of a question mark and it depends on the riskiness of the business that you're investing in. If it's a very risky business, you'll want to apply a high interest rate. And if it's a very low risk business, you can apply a low interest rate. So I actually made up this number of 10%, which shows up as 0.1 in the formula here. So one plus the interest rate in the denominator raised to the power of zero because it's happening today. And you may know that when you raise something to the power of zero, you get one, no matter what that quantity is. So 1.01, 1.1 raised to the power of zero is equal to one. So minus 100 divided by one is uh, minus 100 in today's dollars. So in today's dollars is another way of saying present value. Okay, next let's consider the more difficult one, the $240 uh, payment that we're expecting to get uh, four years from now. So that'll be a $240 uh, benefit that I get four years from now. It's an outflow for the business, but it's an inflow in terms of my personal uh, bank account. So I get $240 four years from now. So I'll take one plus the interest rate again, but this time I'm raising it to the power of four since four is the number of periods away that that cash flow is. So four years from now, I get $240. What is that worth to me today? And the answer is that's worth $163.92, assuming that 10% is the correct discount rate or interest rate here. So if I wanted to know what is the value of this business enterprise, I just sum those two present values and I get $63.92. Now, another word for this $63.92 is the net present value. The net present value of this business opportunity is $63.92. Since it is greater than zero, I'm comfortable saying this is a profitable opportunity for me. As long as the interest rate of 10% is accurate, this venture will be profitable for me. If that number was less than zero, I should not engage in this business opportunity because it has a net uh, negative value to me today. So that was just a quick, um, example of how someone might value this business opportunity. And we're going to revisit this present value formula when we talk about bonds. So long-term liabilities in a future lecture. But this, is, this has just been a little tangent using the cash flow statement to value a company. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.